Hey guys, welcome back to our third youth session on spiritual disciplines. Today we're going to be hearing from Lauren about Bible study. But first, let's watch this short video about what to not do when reading the Bible. Well, that was confusing. Do you need help? Nope. Time to pick a random verse for Bible study. He spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Hmm? Now go and do the same. What? Be kind and compassionate to one another. Okay, cool. Hey, can you help me out? No. So much to do. Oh, 30 seconds. Okay, right. Um, 10 chapters. Here we go. 30 seconds later. Okay, I got five verses done out of 10 chapters. Okay. So today we're going to talk about Bible study and why should we read the Bible? Well, there are so many different reasons for it. First of all, it gives us instructions for how we should live our lives, for example, the Ten Commandments. It also shows us the promises God's made to us. For example, in 1 Chronicles 16.34, it says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love endures forever. In Isaiah 40.29, it says, He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. The Bible can also show us what we are like. In Genesis 1.27, it says, So God created man in his own image. In Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are his workmanship. And in Romans 8.37, it says, In all of these things, we are more than conquerors. The Bible can also help us to find our path in life when we aren't sure or don't know what to do. In Psalm 119.105, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. It also provides reassurance that God has a plan and that he knows what he's doing even when life gets hard. Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. The Bible is also something that not only can we learn from, but we can share with others. Psalm 96 3 says, Declare his glory among nations, his marvellous works among all the people. Next, we're going to talk about what should you read in the Bible. And really, it's completely up to you. Some people are able to just sit down and know what they need or want to read. But for others, it might be a bit harder and they might need some advice on what to read. For this, you can get a daily devotionals that you can do every day. Or the YouVersion Bible app has many different Bible study plans that you can choose from. And they also send you da daily reminders to help you know when to do it. Next, where should we read the Bible? Well, this is quite important because you don't want to pick a place that's really busy and that you're going to get distracted, for example, by your TV or your phone or even your family members. But you also don't want to pick a place that's too comfortable to the point of you might fall asleep. For me, a good place to study the Bible would be sitting at my desk or if it's a nice, a nice day, going outside and reading the Bible. You need to set aside time to do your Bible study. This may involve sacrificing 30 or 40 minutes in the morning so that it can be a part of your morning routine or sacrificing one episode on Netflix to do it in the evening. However, you need to specially set time aside for this. Having it at the same time every day will also help because it will become a habit then and it won't be as much of a challenge to do it. 
You may want to try doing your Bible study at different times throughout the day to see which one works best for you. However, make sure you leave yourself enough time for it because you don't want to end up rushing and not getting the full effect of what you're reading. Although reading the Bible and studying it might seem really exciting, you don't want to overwhelm yourself at the start. Some people may think to just jump in and read 10 chapters a day or do two hours of Bible study a day. For some people, that might be possible, but for others, that could be really overwhelming and may put them off wanting to do it. A Bible study can be as long, as short, or as short as you want. In my opinion, it's better to start small and have a comfortable amount that you want to do that you can build on later as you progress in your Bible studying. Most importantly, it's about doing what works best for you. You want to get the most out of this Bible studying experience and that might look different to what your friend does. People study and learn in so many different ways and studying the Bible is no different. Some people might pray, read three chapters and pray again. Others might do a devotional book. Others might just pray and then look up a verse. You should do what works best for you. You're the one that's going to be studying the Bible during this time, so it should be what you know works for you. It may take you a number of different times of trying different methods, but as long as it works, that's okay. Bible studying doesn't just have to be reading. There are so many other things that you can do. Although actually reading the Bible is really important. You could also watch a YouTube video on something that you read that you don't understand, or you could listen to a podcast of someone explaining some of the things that you want to learn more about. Studying the Bible shouldn't be scary or overwhelming. As long as you do what works best for you and you don't try and take on too much, it'll be really beneficial for you. So now it's time to take all the things that you've just learned and apply them to your life. So I want you to listen to the following resources that I'm about to list. And then I want you to take, choose one of them and actually choose to do one of them today. Or choose a time this week that you're actually going to sit down and do one of them. You plan it today and then do it sometime this week. Um, so I'm going to read out some resources that we have and that we found that you can look at that are really useful and might help you in your time studying the Bible. So first of all, there's the Bible app that a lot of you might have, some of you might not. Um, it has a lot of devotionals and like study plans is what they call them, uh, that you can, you can look up any topic that you need help with and it'll take you through them. It'll have Bible verses, it'll have people who wrote them for those specific things that you need help with. Then there's the IMYC website. On the website they have podcasts and youth resources that you can look up and they're great, so go there. <laughs> So the next three are YouTube channels with videos you can watch instead of reading, if you find that easier. So first of all, there's The Bible Project, which is a YouTube channel that has these amazing resources that talk all about the different parts of the Bible and a lot of the different themes, and they go really in-depth with the books and the writers and everything, and so if you want that kind of stuff, that's the place to go. Then there's a guy named Chad Smith. He used to make vines, and he's a Christian. And so a lot of his videos are really funny, but he also does some really good videos about Christian topics that you can look into. Finally, I actually have some friends who have a YouTube channel called The Josties. Their videos are actually pretty good, and they're about Christian stuff too, and there's also some funny ones as well. So I want to challenge you guys to do one of these things today. I want you to sit down, choose one of the YouTube channels, or your Bible app, or the IMYC website, and then decide, uh, I'm going to do it this time during the week. And then try to make a habit of it. Try to um, just try it out and see if it works for you. So finally, I'm going to end in prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for all of the things that we've learned through this video and for these resources that we can use to study the Bible. I pray that the people watching would actually find time to use them and get a lot out of them. And thank you so much for letting us be able to study your word. Amen. So I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope it helped you, and um, we'll see you next time. Bye!